So you can see I'm sinking into my waist. Without snowshoes, this is a bit of a chore. Damn. Legs are getting cold. We don't have that far to go, so hopefully I'll make it. So it took about a half an hour, but we made it to the entrance of the tunnel. Snow is much deeper than expected. We were sinking chest deep in places where there were snow drifts. And now here is the semi-precarious entrance to the tunnel. You can see it down in there. Um, fortunately, I'm not seeing any animal footprints leading in or out. Uh, so we can just hope that there's not a lion or a coyote or some nasty critter hiding out in there. So we're gonna catch our breath, get ready to head in. But getting in here isn't gonna be an easy task. I'm guessing neither will be getting out. So what do we got? Let's make sure we don't have any avalanche danger. All right, here we go. Okay, I got one log to stand on. Woo! Now I know this is just a tunnel that goes back, so I know there's not a shaft dipping down right here. So hopefully we'll be all right. And have to get out the light to proceed. So let's go on in. Hello. Ah, it does look. Ah, holy. That's oh, a tight squeeze. made it in. It's a little bit warmer inside. So we've just made it in and crawled into the attic. You can see the light out there. Um, now, the most important thing about going into mines, I don't suggest you do it ever. Um, I've been in this mine before. I know where it is. I know how to get out. And most importantly, I left uh, detailed uh, directions for somebody of where I'm going, what I'm doing, just in case there is an emergency. So here we are. Um, upon first glance, it looks like this here must be the vein from here to here. And this is what they were following up in and back. You can see we have a lot of iron staining um, and some greenish yellow, which indicates a sulfide ore. They've chiseled all this out and have headed back in this way. Wow, look at all those sulfides leaching out of this mass. It's super yellow. And then we have white. Uh, could possibly be a little bit of lead from some Galena ore. Pretty wild stuff. Whoa, look at that. It's a moth. Is it alive? It's covered in water. Hey, buddy. Wow. He's not frozen. He must be alive. Here's a big mass of that sulfidey quartz. It seems like the sulfides occur in pockets.
near the vein that they're mining continues back along the ceiling here and on this wall there must have been something in there that deemed chiseling out whoa here's a whole bunch of these moths and for some reason they have water droplets adhered to them i wonder if they're in some sort of hibernation state they must be producing heat because water's not freezing but they just look like a glimmery shiny crystal really but these are live real moths it's unreal so here we have some stalagmites growing up from the ground well actually water droplets are dripping from above and forming these stalagmites pretty wild pretty creepy So it is warmer in here than it is outside. However, there's obviously ice forming on the ground. You can see my steam that I breathe. Uh, it looks like something is sloughed off here up ahead. So we'll proceed with caution. primarily iron and uh, there's a couple small pyrites probably where the um, sulfides leaching from there's a pretty eerie echo I don't know if you can hear that it's a little creepy I'm gonna keep my voice down however I don't want to trigger any sort of break or fall or slide So they obviously had uh, some tracks in here at some point. Uh, these logs across, you can see there's railroad spikes still in them. There's an old can. So they had tracks laid in here to haul the ore out. So at first I thought this might be a, a little cave-in or collapse, but you can see the shoring here. The shoring is holding open the stope. So either the vein got richer and jutted up there or There could have been an upper level, and this was just some sort of chute. So it looks like this rock has just fallen from above. So it's possible they just stoped this out. See, the vein does go up there. Maybe they hit a little glory hole, worked that out, and continued forward up there you can see a big pile of twigs i'm guessing that's going to be a pack rat's nest so the shoring is still doing its job now that one's a little rotted out i wouldn't trust it too much but you can see where they have the log wedged here against bedrock down here against bedrock and then they put in these shims to wedge it tight into place all right, let's continue on. Oh man. So here we go forward and to the right, and then there's a split off here to the left. Now, why did they come in here to the left? 
I see the vein in the ceiling. Looks like we're getting more silver ore looking Galena-y. Uh, the vein does seem to be pinching down though. It's not as wide here. But what led them, what led them to go left? You know, this vein doesn't shoot off. Was there just a small stringer that came straight out and they followed it in? Who knows? Here. So that's uh, mica. Stuff super crumbly. The weather, the water, the oxidation from the sulfides is really loosening this stuff, stuff up. Here's some purple. This is in the schist. This is like a mica schist. And those might be garnets. Still don't really know what they were following. Obviously they could have just mined it all out. Here's some interesting looking. That almost looks like, that's probably a surface coating. <laughs> it almost looked like cinnabar for a second. But it must have been in the schist, whatever it was that they were following. Whoa, look at that. So it's some kind of truly peculiar purplish red coating. Maybe the, the gold or the silver was running with that. And this uh, sulfide seam, there's garnets in it as well. Or that's some kind of decomposed iron. Weird. Let's continue on. So the tracks continued back this way. Sulfide growth that's dripping from above. You can see this milky white is leaching out of the vein here. This stalactite right here is a little bit green, which tells us there might be a little bit of copper in here as well. The character of the vein is most definitely changing. It's getting thinner, it's more altered. You can see how it's squished and deformed. So here's a little offshoot stringer. Who knows if there's anything in it. But you can see how the vein's foliated. You know, the rock must have shifted. You know, the vein went like this, and it broke, so it's here, juts down, here it juts up, here it juts up even further. So the rock was deformed, uh, bent, and the veins got bent along with it. Seems like the vein was running along here, uh, and they got a little off course because it started pinching out and splitting. See, so we have little offshoots down here, here, here. You know, and the vein just gets thinner and thinner as we come down here. Then there's another fork. They got to this point and the vein had essentially, you know, pinched out and more or less disappeared. Uh, here, I'm not really seeing a whole lot of evidence of any sort of interesting sort of vein, except for this continuation, which looks weaker and much smaller. So at this point, they probably got frustrated and they lost their ore. And in an effort to refine it, you know, they went off in this direction and apparently didn't encounter any other veinlets. Uh, most of this looks rel relatively boring and unmineralized and they abandoned it. Let's see if they re-intersect the vein or hit a new one up ahead. Aha! So we got quartz and iron. 
I mean, that's basically super decomposed hematite, those rusty red bloblets. And here we have some more interesting looking quartz. So there are some stringers. It actually looks like this one's behind this mass. So they were off of it. Now the, the tunnel did turn. So I think they, they left the vein actually. I bet you there's a vein behind this wall from the looks of it. I hear something back here. I brought a knife just in case. Uh, hopefully I won't have to wrangle anything. Ooh, here's what they're mining. So it seems like this ore, I mean, this is all super decomposed, kind of looks like gold, but it's actually decomposed pyrite. Um, some green. It seems like, unless there was a solid vein, you know, this material may have been very pockety. Here you can see it. This almost certainly was the ore they were after. You know, there's not a whole lot of it left unless it shoots off that way. Pretty cool. Um, some of that ore left in the wall, if it's worthwhile, one could relatively easy, easily chisel out a couple tons at the very least. Uh, looks like it bends up there and or ends. We will find out. Whoa. 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 Now that is eerie. Oh, there's a little millipede way up in there too. Here we got pyrite showing on this side as well in the iron. Ooh, look at that. It's calco pyrite. That almost looks like the size for dynamite, though. Dynamite in there. Maybe when they were blasting the face forward, it's a remnant hole. You know, there's another one. Those are probably remnant blast holes. There's spooky noises. It's kind of cool. This is a railroad tie made from a pine tree from just outside the mine. So here at the face, we have a little bit of quartz showing. Um, what else do we have? So someone, looks like someone has taken a sample or chiseled something off of here, or semi-recently. This quartz, it's possible this quartz is running a little bit of silver, um, but the mineralization has essentially petered out. So this is something to be wary of. A lot of the mines, some of them closed down uh, because of the war um, in the 40s. Um, others had labor issues, you know, money issues, what have you. But a lot of times you'll see mines for sale and they'll show past production reports, you know, half ounce to four ounces per ton produce all this massive amounts of ore. And it was an extremely rich mine. However, that mine being marketed and sold now, they're using that same data. A lot of times the mines got worked out. You know, the vein pinched down it disappeared and no longer continues forward. They've essentially worked out all the valuable ore. So with these hard rock mines, you really got to explore them yourself. Now, there's no saying that some of these quartz pockets, we don't have anything to follow at this point. And the old timers gave up because either the values are really low but clearly the vein that they started following at the entrance of the tunnel at this point has disappeared, shifted, they got off of it, or it's simply petered out, i.e. the mine is worked out. 
So just because a mine produced vast amounts of gold in the past doesn't mean that it'll, it will produce gold for you today. Now, obviously, this is, this is interesting, but it's so thin. So where did it go? That's uh, hard, hard rock mines for you with veins and intrusions and different rock types. You never know how far the vein's gonna go, how long it's gonna last. So if I were to come in here and do some sampling uh, to see if there's any worthwhile ore left, I would start with sampling the vein material at the front of the adit. I had a sneaking suspicion that they were off of the main vein chute. Yeah, see this? So they were off of the main vein chute that way. But, you know, from just looking at this, you can't really tell. This just looks like a coating between this rock and this rock. And maybe it dips down that way. But since the mine you know, makes a 15 to 20 degree turn, it's possible that behind this lump of rock is a continuation of this vein back there. So I would look for that. So this is where the vein started to do some weird things. And then it pinches out and kind of disappears. So I wonder why, why didn't they take this off? Boom. So that possibly could shoot up that way. Well, there's a different intrusion. This white quartzy from a distance looks pegmatite-y. But this is just uh, mineralized, rotten, massive quartz. Uh, kind of granity. There's a lot of mica in it. This intrusion right here, this white one, disrupted the nature of the vein. The structure changes, the thickness changes after it. So who knows? Possibly somewhere back there. So if this ore actually is productive, one could feasibly come in and start a second at it higher up and work this vein higher um, on a higher level. That would be something to consider if the values are there. Well, it certainly doesn't look like anyone's been actively mining this, so uh, the rumors I heard are not true. But it looks like one could feasibly take a couple samples and see if there's any vein material worth working. Regardless, it was a pretty cool side adventure from my day. So this is different. It's almost cinnabar -y with pyrite and mica in it. This is the cave of stalagmites. So I imagine it's getting dark outside. See, at the front of the adit, the vein's much thicker. Potentially a lot more material to sample and or run. Uh, one could take out pieces of this at the very least. All right, so long mine. It's time to get out of here. Holy, look at that. <laughs> Go for it. Uh, 
There's the outside. Now, I have to get there. Woo! Holy schnitzel. Now I gotta, holy shit. Oh, that wasn't good. That fine. Legs are freezing. My pants froze and then melted, got wet, and they're gonna freeze again. Made it back to the truck safe. Man, was that an arduous trek. That snow was waist deep, chest deep in spots. And that was my first trudging in really deep snow this winter, so it really kicked my butt. Anyway, that was pretty cool. Um, I didn't find any evidence of someone recently living there and or mining, uh, but it was cool. We checked out the vein, checked out the mine, figured out where possibly little pockets of high grade might be left. Um, at the very least, it was a good good stop before heading home today. My legs are soaked. <laughs> My hands are cold and wet. But we survived to explore another day. So thanks for tagging along. We hope to see you next time. See ya.